Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Harmony Plus webinar. Today, we're going to, talk, going to talk about how to prepare and excel in a business competition. My name is Shani, and I'll be the host today. Before that, let me quickly introduce Harmony Plus. Harmony Plus is an official partner of leading universities and institutions in the United States, such as UC Berkeley, SRI International, and San Jose State University. We are committed to providing top-notch programs to outstanding local and international students. Throughout our programs and services, we uh, adapt the hybrid learning platform and model which is including like uh, providing education programs and services. We offer online and offline programs. And uh, we also provide like instant live classes as well as offline guidance. And of course, we combine theories and practice to help our students uh, enhance their skills. Right now, um, so far, uh, how many plus students have been ab admitted to many top uh, universities, including UCLA, uh, NYU, and Princeton universities. And today, it's an honor to invite our uh, guest speaker, Masi, to join us. Masi is a serious entrepreneur in the Silicon Valley. He has got his very first venture capital funding at the age of 18. And he is currently the board member of several tech companies in the Bay Area. And he's also the entrepreneur in residence at, at NC, uh, N, next, N, sorry, N, NECX. And he's the CEO and co-founder of MetaBob. And he's also the co-founder of many other tech companies. He has been guiding for more than 200 student teams. So, uh, it's an honor to have him to join us today. Masi, can you say hi to our audience? Hello, everybody. It's great. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor to be part of this uh, event. So thank you, Shani. Thank you, Harmony Plus. And looking forward to talk to the audience. Thank you, Masi. And uh, so today, Masi is going to share his experience and insights um, with us and we are going to talk a little bit about his background and also he will share us that how to start a business and to join a business competition and also he will base on his experience as an entrepreneur and a mentor to tell us that how to how can high school students uh, take advantage of business competitions and also he will uh, tell us the uh, share with us the tips and also uh, guide us through the journey of joining a business competition. So um, maybe Masi can share the screen. Or do you need me to share this? No. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shani, for the warm introduction. So first of all, a uh, tiny bit about myself. Uh, as Shani mentioned, I am a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've been involved uh, uh, in businesses for the past 10, 15 years, I would say. Uh, my first company, I started when I was still a teenager and back in Italy, my home country. And that's why I moved here to pursue my entrepreneurial goal. Um, we run three successful business since then. I'm currently running a company called Metabob, which is a developer tool. It's an artificial intelligence tool that uh, helps developer to automate the debugging process and increase productivity. Um, that company started with uh, partnering up with NEC, which is a very big Japanese corporation and we recently spin out. I am a, um, throughout my career, I was quite lucky and fortunate. And I also worked quite hard to join several accelerator, which gave me a great uh, um, framework in terms of like how an entrepreneur should uh, act and what are the key elements to make a business successful. Some of which are 
the Alchemist Accelerator, which is a San Francisco based um, accelerator focused on B2B business to business uh, um, companies, startups, so companies that sell to other to other enterprises or other businesses. We also join Antler, which is a Singapore based uh, group. Uh, they have branches all over the world uh, we work with the one in new york and as well as alchemists they are focusing to accelerate companies to give them a framework in order to succeed to scale quicker to understand the customer and uh, like just grow within um, a short timeline so thanks to them again i learned a lot uh, especially in my younger age when i didn't have as much experience in the business side and i was able to develop uh a framework that I could use for my businesses. Other than that, I was, uh, since my first few businesses, I always wanted to, I always joined startup competition. So that's, I always found that a great way for one to get validation of my business, to be able to meet, network with investors and other founders, as well as to bootstrap my business. But that's actually one of the best way I always believed to get your business going, winning a startup competition. Um, I remember during my first startup competition I attended, I met an entrepreneur that uh, he was as young as me, was very young from MIT, and uh, he just started his business. And I asked him, how much money did you raise from your investor? And he told me, none so far. All my business entirely run on startup competition prices. So he said that he just came back from Poland. I met him in a competition in uh, uh, Eastern, um, in the East Coast, in the United States. And he told me that the previous three months, he traveled to Poland, he traveled to Asia, and he just signed up for all these competitions. And he said like, yeah, even if I win one out of five, that's pretty much how I um, all do the our fundraising. I just get the money from this competition that are completely equity free. And thanks to that, I'm able to, um, uh, run my business without asking money to investors. So that was a great learning for me. And actually I, I took a page out of this book. And again, I signed up to more and more competition. I won um, government founded competition in Korea called Case Startup Challenge. Um, I actually won the first ever edition to it in 2016. Um, it's a pretty big competition uh, divided in several rounds. I participated through my second company, Smartflex. Now it's called SenseTech. It's a sensor company. Um, we develop pH sensors for cosmetic agriculture application. So to track uh, alkalinity, acidity of the skin through an app. So I participated to the competition within perhaps three months that uh, I started the company with a professor from the University of Texas Arlington. Um, together we decided to sign up just to, to, to validate our idea and our MVP, Minimum Viable Product. And uh, we actually won the flu round, first round. Uh, we got invited to Seoul to pitch for the final with the government and we won that. So actually our company was Accelerate in Korea. We got founding for up to a year, um, working visa and all of that. And that was pretty much how we got the company going. We built the product. We increased manufacturing. And again, that was a great learning for me. And we also got a lot of press, a lot of PR, a lot of exposure. So it was just a great experience. And uh, after that, recently, I started to mentor teams uh, through the Future Entrepreneur Challenge. I mentor a team founded by high school students, college students, and also more experienced entrepreneur. And uh, through that, the team I mentor have reached over $6 million in funding. Uh, a lot of them have joined, follow my same um, kind of structure. They have joined Accelerator. Uh, they have joined Startup Competition, winning several, uh, several of them, especially during the first six months of their life. So I'm lucky to be able to work with bright young entrepreneurs and to be able to mentor them, telling them what I know and helping them to succeed. Wow, that's very impressive. And since you mentioned there is a lot of like business competition you joined before and you are also mentoring like high school students, do you have any recommendation about business competition for the parents and students here? Yes, um, I do indeed. Recently, I have been looking 
and specifically business competitions targeted for high school students or from a younger demographic. Um, there are several available, um, starting with FBLA and DECA that obviously are attached to the clubs. Um, so in order to participate, you need to be part of those um, clubs. But there are also others that are independent, um, a few of which we are actually helping our students to participate in and to apply and to hopefully win. Um, one is Diamond Challenge, is, uh, I can go a bit more in depth, and another one is Blue Ocean. Those are the two that also are about, they're just starting right now, so it's um, in terms of timeline, this is the perfect time. Like I'm in Diamond Challenge, the application deadline was on Friday of this week, January 8th. Blue Ocean, I believe, is early February. But there are a lot of competition that uh, high school students can attend. Uh, again, here we put a few of them. Conran Challenge is another one. And I really suggest, I strongly suggest all students and audience, if you guys are interested in business competition, again, you can reach out to me and to Shani. We will leave our contacts and we can definitely help you uh, and guide you through which one that would be the best fit based on your goals. Um, as mentioned, Diamond Challenge is one of, that um, we are helping our students and teams to apply. Um, we are helping them to go through the process. It's a global high school students entrepreneurship competition. So it's very well known in the United States and all over the world, I would say. It's created by the University of Delaware Horn Entrepreneurship. It was created in 2012. And it's a great opportunity for students to learn about entrepreneurship, but also putting their idea into action. So I think it's the uh, recommended uh, team size is two to four. Um, the teams that uh, are working with us, they all have about three members. So that's, I would say, it's the sweet spot for uh, uh, participating to these competitions. There are two types of competitions that you can apply for through the Diamond Challenge. One is the business innovation. So if you have a for-profit business, it is your goal is to generate a lot of revenue. That is the, comp the um, competition type that will work for you. While if you're focused more on a no profit and your goal is to make a social impact, they also offer social innovation, which is more focused towards um, social impact. So actually we, our teams there, we have one team for um, working on the business innovation and the other team on the social innovation. So again, we are helping currently teams in which in both types and um, they have similar uh, structure but different requirements. So both of them though, are very helpful. Um, they, in terms of prices, the first place gets $8,000, the second place get 4,000 and the third place get 2,000. And uh, again, it's a very, other than just the price is the exposure that makes a huge impact for these teams. Uh, even now that the, the competition is not in person, but is all virtual, uh, all the competition are broadcasted, they get a lot of press, uh, they get a lot of exposure. So it's a great opportunity for students to get to boost their confidence and to learn a lot about entrepreneurship. In terms of timeline, time um, the deadline for the first phase was uh, as mentioned on, Feb on Friday, January 8th, and that you have to submit a five page written concept about your idea as, as well as your pitch deck. And then you will have a few rounds in which you pitch in front of the judges, now uh, currently all virtually. And then the final will be on April 16. The other competition that we are helping and we are currently in the process of uh, applying with our teams is the Blue Ocean, uh, which is also a virtual entrepreneurship competition that attracts some of the best high school students uh, from all over the world. Uh, there's up to five students per team. The price is a bit lower than the Diamond competition. It's $1,000 for first place, 750 second and 500 third. However, again, uh, this is, gives you a lot of exposure. The best social pitch also gets $1,000 extra, and then the people choice award um, gets $750. So the audience can vote for the one they like the most, and that's will also get us a price. And um, in terms of the timeline for this competition, I believe the application is due mid February, I think February 16. Um, and then as the diamond challenge, there will be a few 
round in which you pitch in front of the judges and the final will also be around April time. Thank you, Masi, for the information. I believe this is very helpful. And uh, but besides that, uh, we also want to know that what benefits high school students can gain from these uh, competitions. Yes, um, there are several benefits, and I touched base on really on some of which when I was talking about my experience. But uh, I divide them into few areas. The first one is regarding to related to student growth. So what students can learn and uh, their, how can this competition affect their growth? One is because it's, it's a real world engagement structure. So um, students through this competition are encouraged and they have to interview real prospects in order to gather evidence. So the framework of it, it really follows uh, evidence-based entrepreneurship, which it means, which really is what most of teams um, and entrepreneurs now have to do in order to raise funding and show evidence that your their company will succeed. So they follow, from a student standpoint, it's very beneficial to be able to learn how to talk to customer, how to learn from potential users and build the product based on that. It's a great learning, um, especially for some of the students that perhaps are quite shy. They don't have much experience for it. It's just it's, they can learn that as early as in high school. It's just a huge, uh, um, they will give up great benefits for them in terms of just entrepreneurial mindset, um, because that's what entrepreneurs need to do. And uh, accelerator like Y Combinator, the alchemist, that's what they teach you, that everything needs to be based on the customer feedback. So that is a, a learning that uh, definitely students will get through this competition because they need to show how they get traction. Second, uh, it's leadership and teamwork skills. Uh, that's obviously one of the like most evident students will get uh, the need to display leadership through this program. They need to they have a small team. They need to learn how to work together, how to implement their, um, how to like show and work with their team in order to build real products. So divide the work, be able to take advantage of their team and skill sets, and to as exactly like every team do right so that's a huge aspect of every entrepreneur's um, success that's a huge influence for it how you can work with your team and um, if you can start doing it while in high school through this competition again that will prove to be very beneficial for you and for your future career learning how to coordinate with your teammates how to um, as, I, as I said learn from them learn new skills from them but also provide value to them and so be able to coexist and sometimes it's quite challenging because obviously uh, everyone wants to be a leader or in case no one in some cases no one wants to be a leader but again being able to uh, learn how to coexist with your team and to all provide value and to grow together it's a great learning uh, get the entrepreneurial entrepreneur mindset Again, it's related to the first point. You want entrepreneur um, students through this program that will follow an uh, evidence-based model. So they will be able to talk to customers, learn uh, um, what it takes to build product, to show traction, and just to solve problems, right? So that's a huge aspect of entrepreneurship, learning how to solve problems and to make a solution to every day's problem, which again can be applied in every aspect of a student's career. Even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur after you grow up and you go to college and you want to pick a different job, being able, having an entrepreneur mindset in order to solve problems, learn the ideal way, the ideal framework into solving every day's problem will help you greatly throughout your career. In any type of career path you will want to pursue. So that's definitely a learning that I always suggest. And again, even if you are in high school, you still don't know exactly what you want to do. Getting an idea through this type of programs to how what an entrepreneur does and what's the framework, it would be very helpful. Um, learn how to build real products. That's another huge aspect. You want um, students are encouraged to show their prototype of their ideas. In order to do so, they need to learn 
in case they want to build a software, basic coding skills, uh, at least how product works, how pro products are built, um, which again is a awesome learning because uh, a lot of time, like students, they might not even think about uh, that until they're in college, but if they can get a boost of it and they can start learning together while in high school through these competitions and also what is the ideal way to do it again all through based on customer feedback and learning customer interviews then they end up being in college already with great knowledge of coding great knowledge of how software works hardware, hardware works and so far based on our experience i work with a lot of students that had no knowledge whatsoever in coding and now after a few months working with us uh, they are able to build working products and to be able to show MVPs. And again, even if your first idea doesn't work, which is very common, right? Like I had three successful company out of probably 10, 15 that I tried. So everyone is expected to fail, but being able to build the product, your ideas, you will always be beneficial, right? Because you can always try new ideas. If something fail, you're able to just try a different one. Um, another is public speaking and presentation skills. Students will have the opportunity to pitch in front of judges, in front of investors, in front of mentors. And uh, that's a great learning. Um, uh, like just being able to practice and to present your idea in front of a panel of people. Again, that will boost your confidence. It will give you a lot of teaching on how you need to present what are the ideal practices for presentation and public speaking. And that's again, will benefit the students throughout their entire journey, because again, any career path, they might pick having a good presentation and public speaking skills will help you no matter what. Connecting with like minded peers, um, most of the time, this competition, if you meet people throughout this competition are people like you that wants to be entrepreneur. So you can build strong connections that will last a lifetime. I met so many great friends through startup competitions and entrepreneurship events um, that I met when I was high in high school, college. So you will always meet great people and not just students, but mentors, advisors, judges. So you can build long lasting connection with influential figure in the space and also students like you that wants to be entrepreneur. And you never know, you know, in life, knowing people that are like-minded and um, that also want to be entrepreneur will always benefit benefit you in life. No, again, you, uh, no matter what you want to do, when you grow up, you might link up again and perhaps like start a company together, work together, you never know. And lastly, opportunity to network and gain exposure. So this competition, again, offer you the opportunity to uh, get a lot of exposure. I mean, the press will write about you. People will know you, right? Because most of, the, most of these events are broadcasted, uh, are shown all over the world. So it will give you the opportunity to get exposure, to meet, again, people all over the world, and to just boost your confidence. Another great aspect, another great benefits that students can get from this competition is regarding their idea, their business. So this competition are an awesome way to validate your idea. And if you don't know if your idea is good or bad, participating to these to business challenges or startup competition, it would be the, it's the ideal way to do it for free, right? Because without having to build the product and actually test it and then figuring out if that's going to be successful or not. The best way, try to participate to one of these competition, pitch in front of experienced entrepreneurs, and they will tell you if that's a good idea or not. One, because it's of evidence-based entrepreneurship. So business challenges provide an age appropriate introduction to the state of the art best practices for entrepreneurship, which focus on the use of evidence-based and lean startup methods. So they follow the most recent framework of entrepreneurship, again, taught by Y Combinator and all these, the most popular accelerator and investment group. So it gives you a great framework of how 
uh, what are the ideal state of the art practices for entrepreneurships. So if you can learn that and if you can prove your idea to be successful following those frameworks, then again, it will definitely show you that your idea is worth pursuing even before committing time and money into building the product. Also, you can get feedback from judges and mentors that have been there before. So they've seen hundreds, thousands of this presentation. They can tell you what's wrong, what's right. They can give you very valuable feedback that you can um, get and uh, like uh, improve your idea, improve your product based on that. So always be open-minded try to get as many feedback as possible. Negative feedback are always great because that's can, uh, if people are actually give you negative feedback means like they're paying attention to what you are telling them and they're actually taking the time to give you valuable feedback to for you to then improve your idea to make your product better. Uh, again, when I started, I got a lot of negative feedback on my first product and thanks to that, I was able to pivot and I was able to change it and make it a successful business, all based on this feedback I got. So that's a huge value that this competition provide. Also connecting with the mentors and benefits from their experience. Um, several times competition like the Diamond Challenge also offer you uh, outside mentorship. So you can they link, they connect you with people that can guide you through it. And again, they can link up with you, give you feedback and uh, help you to um, polish your idea, polish your deck and just teach you entrepreneurial uh, skill set and the content that you can always use. Third benefit is fundraising. So when I talked in the beginning about my background and experience, I mentioned that pretty much my first company, I did raise funding outside uh, of this starter competition, but of winning and participating to competition definitely helped to be able to build the product and grow without having constantly to raise funding. And my second business, really we, uh, we bootstrapped the business. We got it started because the case startup challenge. And the reason for it is because starter competition, they give you usually the average price it's about 25 to 50 grand business competitions that are more targeted to a younger demographic the average top price though is about eight grand so it's very like it's a, a considerable amount and all these prices are equity free what that means is when you raise funding from investors they will ask you part of your business in return right so you raise fifty thousand dollar and you need to give away ten percent 5% of your business to the investors in order to raise the funding. While startup competitions and business competition, they give you money without anything in return. So it's a great way to bootstrap your company because it's just free money, right? So it's very valuable. You don't really need to, um, again, spend a lot of time talking to investor and getting eight, 10 grand if you win one or two. You, again, it will allow you to build your product to build your business to a stage where you can actually start selling and then give you a lot of exposure and credibility. So if you win one of these challenge, will give you a lot of credibility with investor, will facilitate future round with investors. So because you already have um, valid validation from those competitions that your idea is valuable, you have the exposure. So investors will definitely um, be interested in talking to you if you have a word or if you have succeeded before in one of these challenge. And lastly, last but not least, school admission. So this challenge, if you are in high school, give you also a great value, great benefits in terms of the chances to get accepted into a top tier college. In fact, I've talked throughout my, especially in the past few years to several admission officers and I work with several high school students as well that participated to this competition one. And I've seen directly how this competition can affect your chances to be accepted into a top tier school. In fact, even a failed business attempt show a student's drive, creativity and leadership skill 
to identify a problem and solution. So even if your business attempt doesn't go through, admission officers in school value that a lot because again, it shows the students drive, leadership, grind to make something happen, right? So no matter what, it's always great learning. And again, admission officer will value that. Also, competitive college, six students who are leaders. And uh, what's better leaders, like what better way to prove it than starting a business? And uh, that's definitely something that, again, you will display and show your leadership skills. And also, starting a business is much riskier. A lot of students, what they do, they step into a ready made existing organization that can be you know, student government, clubs, or volunteering with community groups. Those are all great things, but again, starting a business is much riskier and require way more courage and innovation than doing that, right? Because it's a completely different ball game. It takes, you need to take a risk, put a lot of work to succeed because you will compete with older entrepreneurs. And you know, starting a business is hard and it requires a lot of, a lot of efforts, a lot of time, and a lot of grind. So if you can do that, again, it just show, you display your uh, like leadership skills, you display, you display your drive, it just displays your personality and uh, admissions, school admissions officer definitely value that. And uh, competition like Diamond Challenge, um, competition like Blue Ocean, they are well known. So admission officer know about those competition and uh, they're well known everywhere in the world. So they are the type of competition that, again, school will look for um, if you can place your team as a top team into this competition, top five, top 10, again, that will be very valuable. Even if you don't win, no matter what, just being able to attend those competition, you will show that you want to make that happen and will, um, definitely um, have a great impact on your chances to be admitted. And lastly, uh, I wanna just uh, perhaps can give a few tips on how to succeed, again, based on my experience as an entrepreneur and as a mentor, uh, from what we've seen, we've had, uh, I've had students and teams that have been placed at the top of this competition. And what I've seen in terms of common aspects is all these teams had a mentor, so in some cases I was the mentor, but no matter what, if you start, if you wanna to participate to this competition, especially if you are in high school, try to get a mentor, an entrepreneur that can guide you through the process, can give you feedback and they can really walk you through each step of it. Um, it's very challenging. And uh, when I started uh, my entrepreneurial career, I didn't have any mentor and I made a lot of mistakes. So it was very tough for me to, to just get it going. I'm also European, so the culture is not, uh, it's very different in Silicon Valley. So I had to pretty much learn by myself as I did my business. And I wish I had somebody, an advisor, a mentor, again, could kind of guide me through and give me feedback on what I was doing. But nowadays, especially here in Silicon Valley, there is so many opportunity to get a mentors, to get people that will be willing to help you with your business. So try to do that, get someone that can give you feedback and teach you the framework. Keep it clean and simple, clear and simple. What that means is uh, what I've seen from some students is they try to overdo it. So they, if they ask for 10, if their competition asks for 10 slides, they do 15 slides are super worldly. They try to overdo it. They try to do more than request that than ask for, which is never a good idea. You want to like, you want to keep your presentation, your idea, very clear, simple to understand. The problem needs to be well-defined as the solution. So the flow is the most important part. It's not rocket science. You don't need to impress the judges with fancy word or again, it's all about your traction and validation. So how is your business? Why is your business gonna be successful? What is your unfair advantage compared to the competitions? What do you know that nobody else does? And just 
make it simple. So uh, when I read your pitch deck, I need to understand it without having to ask you too many questions. So within 10 seconds of you presenting, I need to know the problem that you are trying to solve. Do your research. So obviously you need to, coming up with a good idea, it's not simple. Coming up, identifying a problem that is big enough to start a business, it's not that simple. Uh, what you need to do is first, I suggest you to identify a problem that you have, you and your team have, so that you are, um, that you understand very well a personal problem, but also the problem needs to be popular, it has to be expensive, so people need to be willing to pay for in order to solve the problem. It has to be mandatory, so it has to be urgent. So there are several criteria that define a problem that is good to start a business around, and you need to do your research about that. So do your research, talk to customers, and get put a lot of work into make sure that the problem you identify and the solution is valuable. Also, enter plenty of competitions. Um, again, the, it's going to be very hard to just participate into one and win that one. It's a numbers game. Uh, everyone is going to be valuable for you. I suggest you to avoid the one without price money because based on my experience, they're just not as valuable. Um, they're just not as professional. There is not much effort put behind. Uh, and there are a lot of those. But uh, again, I suggest you to look for the most, uh, the one with price money because that will ensure that uh, the competition is, uh, will give you more visibility, it's well put together. And also you can use, again, in case you win, you can use the money to help your business to grow. So that's just based on my experience and just try to sign up for as many as possible. They will all be valuable. Just pitching in front of a group of people, investors and get feedback is always valuable. Also look beyond the competition itself. Um, Again, just it's not just about winning the competition, but it's what the competition can offer to you and your team. What that means is in, you can always meet new people. You can network with the judges, with the mentors, try to get the full experience, the full advantage of these challenges, this competition. Try to meet as many people as possible. Try to be involved as much as possible uh, because that's really going to be the long-term value of them. Uh, on my end, as mentioned before, I have met so many great friends. I met business partner, my current co-founder. I actually met them through Han Hackathon, which is a co uh, engineering competition. So my CTO, that's how we met through one of these competition. We were competing against, and then we became friends, and now he's my business partner. So, and actually most of the people that I work with, I met them through startup competition, business competition, business events. So really try to take the full advantage of it. Again, it's not just about winning or losing. It's about the full experience. And then confidence is preparation. So if you are, uh, if you are shy or if you are afraid of pitching in front of people, which is totally, totally understandable. I was very shy when I started my first business. What my suggestion is just over prepare. Because preparation is confidence. If you know what you're talking about it, if you're an expert in your field, if you're an expert in your presentation, in your area, you will be confident. So that's all you need to do, really. Over-prepare. Don't worry about it. You will, be, you will do great. Just confidence is all based on preparation. All right. Um, I want to walk you like throughout this presentation, I mentioned that we are working with a few teams that have actually participated to some of these business challenges. Some of them are in process of doing that. Um, two of our recent uh, um, team of students that we are well, helping to win in these competitions are Dream Accelerator and Opordemic. Dream Accelerator is the crowdfunding platform that helps school clubs raise funding uh, by donor and Opordemic is a AI platform. It's an artificial intelligence platform that provides customer recommendation to students on um, extracurriculum activities. So both of this team were created through one of our program. 
called Future Entrepreneurs Challenge, uh, which is really this program. We build it in order to be able to provide the content and the framework to students to be able to create a business. So uh, based on my experience, as mentioned, when I started, there was really, I didn't really have any help or any um, idea of how a company should be run and what is the ideal framework and process for that. And that's why we created this program to be able to, within eight to 10 modules, to teach the students what are the core area of entrepreneurship, how to identify a problem, how to build a solution around the problem, how to identify your target audience, how to build your customer acquisition strategy, how to make a user experience design, how to build an MVP, how to create a revenue model, and how to learn how to pitch in front of investors. Those are some of the most relevant modules we teach. And really through this program, what we've seen is students that join without any knowledge of business or entrepreneurship within eight classes that able to make a business that is valuable, make a successful company. And again, several of them, they actually then go ahead and pursue their business, make it happen. And again, Opordemic and Dream Accelerator are two of them. They met through this program. They decided to move forward after the program ended and uh, try to make it happen, try to make a company succeed. So after the first, after these uh, um, eight classes we have had with them, they ask us if we can keep supporting them. So we have we had them join into our second phase. We also have an accelerator program through Harmony Plus. We call it phase two, where what we do is after they come up with their business idea, after they make their pitch deck, we help them to accelerate. So to validate their company with customer, to validate their product with their user, and then to get ready to raise funding. So they've done that. That's a two month long program as most of Accelerator, they go anywhere between eight to 12 weeks. Um, that is the time required to really get validation with the customer. And that with, throughout this time, again, they optimize the product, they optimize all their pitch decks and business plans and the customer acquisition model, revenue model, and they get enough traction to then be able to raise funding. And then the programs and for again, few of them, and again, Dream Accelerator and Opordemic are a great example. They go even beyond the Accelerator program. We offer uh, one on one, a customized mentorship with them. And the mentorship is again, it's based on the, on the team's needs and their goals, but that goes from um, making sure that the program, that the product is scalable, it works well. So, from a technical standpoint, from a business standpoint, get as many customers as possible, but also to be able to join this competition. So we mentor them through the process of joining as many startup competition, startup um, competition or business challenge, um, how to make sure that you have the best chance to win those challenges and just anything they need. So in terms of like the basic of each of these phases, phase one, which is our FEC program, what we do, the goal is to have them be able to present. So it's an eight modules uh, course where at the end, the students present with their team in front of a panel of investors and judges to get feedback on their business idea. So the requirements for their final pitch is uh, they need to show the team, their problem they identify, the solution, the market size, their customer persona, their competitive advantage, revenue model, customer acquisition strategy, but they also need to show their products. So throughout the course, we have course um, we have uh, modules about design. So we teach them how to build a mock-up, how to use tools like Balsamic, Figma, Marvel. And we also have some basic coding uh, class, so how to build an MVP using Glide or a prototype that again can show investors how the product will look like and will function. And lastly, like they will ask investors how much money they, they need. So we also teach them how to budget the amount of money they will need for uh, to actually start their business. Now for the one again, that want to pursue the business, uh, most of the time 
the winners of phase one, but you don't need to win to be able to participate to phase two. You just need to show us that your idea is valuable. So we need to be convinced that uh, your your product has potential. Then you can join the accelerator program that again is going to be over the summer. And to that is really based on customer validation. So we follow the lean product playbook and uh, through that a lot is going to be interviewing customers, learn from them and really build the product based on their feedback, identify and finalize your go-to-market strategy and growth, as well as making sure that the execution is that your strategy is clear. So product roadmap and uh, business plan, revenue model. So how you can uh, pretty much will get you ready to raise funding. So following a, a basic like a standard framework of most accelerator will just guide the teams through the process of validating your business idea and get ready to raise funds. And lastly, after the accelerator program, we do one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So for the team that actually they launch the product, for the team that they actually become after our phase, then that is the time where you need to generate revenue. You need to, again, build a scalable product that works for thousands of users, uh, winning comp startup competitions, business challenges, and just get ready to make your business successful. And that's, his, that's an example of it. Our one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship, really the time is customizable. So it's based on the team's needs. It can be three months, it can be six months. Um, and based on that, the core area is making your product as good as possible. So make sure that your software or hardware will work great and your customer is satisfied with it, but also helping you with everything related to your business, the business structure, making sure that again, your company is well structured in terms of equity, all the um, legal accounting stuff, but also your marketing. So how you will acquire customer, again, all your budgeting, revenue model projection, and just help you make your startup successful. Uh, based on your needs. And uh, again, based on uh, the two teams I mentioned, they went both through these three phases and uh, now they're going through phase the one-on-one -on -one mentorship and uh, they have shown great progresses. They both have products. They both have a, a very defined strategy. They're participating to the Diamond Challenge, both of the team. One is a social innovation, um, which is, uh, and uh, um, the other one is a uh, business innovation. So we are again helping they have different goals, but both of them show great, great progresses. And we're really excited to see both of their companies to see it in the future. And uh, so if uh, other than the FEC, we also have a few other programs that related to entrepreneurship, one of which is UX design. The other one is public speaking. But really, in order to, if you want to join, we'll help you to enhance your soft skills, teamwork, presentation skills, ability to do research, project and product management, your confidence, general business knowledge, mentorship. So all of those are just some of the benefits you will get from this program. And uh, yeah, in terms of the uh, timeline, we'll have a program, of the first one, the next one is going to be 10 weeks, 10 sessions, and it's going to start on January 29. It's going to go through April 2nd, and that's going to be every Friday from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. And we also the, have another cohort starting on February 28th. We'll go till May 2nd. And then we have a UX design, which again is more focused for people that want to improve their designing skills. We also offer a course focus on that. Uh, we have a module on the FEC about design, but again, if you wanna pursue that as a career, or if you wanna learn more about design, you can join that, that is a five weeks long. The next cohort will start on January 20. And lastly, the presentation skills. So if you wanna emphasize your public speaking skills and really learn how to make killer presentations, um, again, we also offer a presentation skills workshop outside of the FEC. It's four modules. The next one start um, next week, the January 19th. 
so you know, just about 10 days from now and uh, that's pretty much it so if you're interested in owning this program you can contact shani and uh, at the email here if you guys want to have any questions for me um, please feel free to ask them now you can also reach out to me at massey at harmonyplus.org and uh, yeah looking forward to hearing your questions Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, Masi, for the presentation and give us a lot of information. Uh, we do receive some questions from the audience. Uh, we have a question from Neil, and he mentioned that uh, can you make an idea like a sort of insurance instead of making an actual physical product? Um, yes, we can ask. We, we can create um, startup other than physical products. But, for the insurance, um, Masi, do you have any examples? Uh, sorry, Shani, you, um, you froze for a second. Can you repeat oh. the questions? Um, yeah, so the question oh, from Neil is that, uh, can you make an idea like a sort of insurance instead of making an okay. actual physical product? Yeah, of course. Like uh, we have team make an idea both uh, as a physical product as well as software, SaaS. So that's, we are open to any type of ideas. So as hardware or software, it can be insurance, it can be even a service company. Um, some students, we actually have done that. Um, we have had, I would say maybe 70% of the students have software ideas and about 30% of hardware, but you know, we're open. Like as long as our focus is on the problem, if you guys, if they came up with problems that are valuable and they have proof that those are existing problems based on customer interviews, then it's okay. As long as, again, the problem exists and they can show me that and validate that, then uh, it doesn't matter if it's hardware or a software, we can help the students make prototype in, in both. Thank you, Masi. And we have another question from Sue Wu Bi. Uh, she asked that he or she uh, asked that with students not only participate in those great competitions, but also learn how to set up a startup company in our courses. Of course. <laughs> yes, yes. That's kind of the one of the main focus for us. Uh, I mean, this business competition is more used as a validation rather than just as a um, main emphasis. The goal for us is to help the students to set up a, a successful startup. That's really our goal. And so starting from, again, problem valuations up to product building. So making sure that their MVP will uh, work well. So every single stage, every single phase, we support the students to, with the end goal, to have them make a killer startup. So become successful entrepreneur. That's our end goal. And the business competition is a great way for them to validate that and to be able to get funding from it and just learn, get, uh, get growth. But uh, again, our end goal it is to build the startup companies. Thank you, Masi. And answer to Hong Hui's questions. Uh, yes, Masi uh, recommended a few uh, business competitions, especially designed for high school students, including Diamond Challenge, um, Blue Ocean and Con Conrad Challenge. So maybe Masi, you can go back. Yes. Yeah. Yes, those are some of the competition I recommend. And again, uh, I think Shani left my email on the chat. So you feel free to reach out to me if you have additional questions. But uh, some the, the one that based on my experience are the most valuable are um, the Diamond Challenge, the Blue Ocean Challenge, uh, Conrad is also very valuable. And if the students is part of FBLA on DECA, I also strongly recommend to attend and participate to their business competitions. So that is only for students that are part either of FBLA or DECA, you can join their competition, but those are also very valuable. Uh, so again, what we went over throughout the beginning of the workshop is Diamond Challenge and Blue Ocean. And the reason why is because currently we have two teams, Opodemic and Dream Accelerator that are participating to the Diamond Challenge. Dream Accelerator is a social innovation team while um, Opodemic is a business innovation. And the Diamond Challenge is 
The deadline was actually on Friday for the first phase. It was a five page written concept. And then the, there will be few uh, pitch competitions live, uh, virtually, sorry, not live this year, but they will, uh, will end on April 15, April 16. And uh, again, the first place gets $8,000, second place gets 4,000 and third place gets 2,000. And uh, you can either join as a business innovation or social innovation. As mentioned, we have two teams and uh, Dream Accelerator is a crowdfunding platform that helps students from always underserved communities, as well as students that have products, that have ideas to make a social impact, to raise funding from donors. Well, Outpordemic is a business innovation, and what they do is a artificial intelligence platform that provides customized suggestions to students for extracurricular activities. So, again, that's based on your business goal. And the other one is Blue Ocean, which uh, um, you, man, if you guys are looking to join, you still have time. I think the f um, deadline is uh, on February. I believe it's February 19th. I'll have to double check, but it's definitely like mid February. And uh, you'll have to submit a three to five um, minutes pitch deck, uh, pitch presentation. And uh, the first prize get a thousand dollars, second 750 and third 500 also will end around April. So those are the two that we are, um, that you can join right now. And uh, they're both very valuable. So, but again, there are so many others. And if you are, if you have any other questions regarding one specific one, one specific competition, just reach out to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, so based on this question, um, uh, parent or student or father like to know like what age do you recommend to start joining uh, these competitions? Yes, uh, what I suggest is uh, high school is a perfect time for that. Uh, in my opinion, the sooner the better, honestly. Uh, there is no really like negative effect of participating too early because in the worst case scenario, again, you might not win this competition, but it's a great learning. So again, I work even with middle school students before and I really walk them through. They, I, I seen them going from no knowledge whatsoever of business to actually come up with great ideas and making great decks great presentations and just seeing the progress they made, it was astonishing to me. Because I mean, if you're in middle school, you are able to sell your ideas to investors. You can just imagine when you get, when you are in college, right? How good you would be. So what I suggest is like, ideally in high school, if you're interested in just entrepreneurship overall, even if not necessarily you wanna be an entrepreneur in your life, I suggest you that to join one of these competition or more than one, just to give it a try, just to be able to learn and practice your public speaking, practice your teamwork and get an idea about a frame, the entrepreneurship framework that again, it can be applied not just for entrepreneurship, but it can apply for so many different uh, jobs and the career path you will have in the future. So being able to solve a problem and being able to demonstrate, validate, how you would solve it through evidence. Again, it can be, it would be helpful in not just a, you as an entrepreneur, but in any career path you will pick. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, so yeah, this is very helpful. And if you have any more questions, uh, because we have very limited time, if you have more questions, feel free to contact uh, me or Marcy. Um, Maybe you can go back to the last slide about oh. our contact. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And I also like see uh, uh, some audience starting to ask like, um, what kind of class uh, do you think uh, they should enroll now? Um, it would be better that if we can, you can reach out to us, then we can talk and then based on your needs and see what's your current stage and see if we can join the phase one class, or maybe we can directly join phase two or phase three progress. So that's it for today. Thank you so much, Masi. And thank you all the parents and students for joining us. Thank you all guys. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hear from you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you, Shani. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you.